I will share today's lesson screen. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Today's topic, patience and endurance. Uh, James chapter 5, verse 7 to 12. I will be reading uh, the King James Version first, and then I will be reading the New Living Translation. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. King James Version, James chapter 5, verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. New Living Translation says that verse this way. Dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rains in the fall and in the spring. They eagerly look for, they eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. So what is James trying to tell? What is James telling us? Okay. First off, he's addressing believers in Christ. Everyone who at one point in their life has asked the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive them of their sins and now asked them to come and live in their heart is now a believer in Christ. We are now a member of the family that God has brought forth through his son. And that's you and me. And I know it's Tuesday morning, 11 o'clock. I know the kind of people who would come on this, those who are in Christ and those who are seeking Christ. If you're not in Christ and you're not seeking Christ, well, I let something's going on in your life. I doubt if you would be here, even though I would be glad if you'd be here. I doubt it. Okay, just, just saying. So believers in Christ are to be patient even in the midst of injustice. We know about injustice. Okay? But the word of God is to be patient. Okay? Believers in Christ need to endure. Okay? We're learning about endurance now in, in tough times, tough situations. Endure. Hold on. Do not give up. Do not give up to those, that, those dark places that want to come and overtake you. Do not give up on God just because uh, your perception has been turned upside down. Do not give up on your position and, and your commitment to God through Christ Jesus just because there's, there's a pressure leaning you in a different way. Okay? Believers in Christ trust in God through their trials. Through the trials, trust in him. That means you're going you're gonna to go through this. Okay? And, and I would dare to say, as we were talking about becoming seniors at the beginning of the faith building hour, we have went through many a trials. Mm -hmm. And those trials that you went through, look back over them and be encouraged how God brought you through. Amen. 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 Believers in Christ refuse to try to get even for wrongs committed against them. Mm -hmm. In other words, don't be plotting somebody else's demise. Mm -hmm. Don't don't be up there trying to. Well, this one did this. To, I'm gonna get him. You just mm -hmm. wait. I'm gonna get him. Mm -hmm. What is the scripture? Vengeance is the Lord's. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you go down that road, you're opening up a door you don't want to open. Mm -hmm. First off, you're disobedient. Mm -hmm. Second of all, sometimes when we open a door into the darkness, it, it, it has an effect on us that we don't need or want, but we've opened the door. 
Mm-hmm. So James is speak it's speaking to believers in Christ on about being patient, on about enduring, on about how you deal with those who are oppressing you. Now it don't mean that you just fall down and let them walk all over you. Mm-hmm. But what it does mean, you take that to God in prayer, let God deal with them as you stand up in God as he leads you. Mm-hmm. Patience. Now, some of us have more patience than others. And you want to, if, if, here's a test. And it's, I'm sorry, I can't come up with one for you non-drivers. But for all of you who drive the New York streets, mm-hmm. if you don't have a course and striving to increase in patience. I don't know what else will lead you to go down that road. My God. These people cannot drive anymore. These people have nothing but rage and I'm gonna beat you to to where I gotta go and I'm gonna cut you off and treat. And if you dare try and get in my way, I may try and shoot you. Listen to all the road rage situations that go on out there. Yes. So if you 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 want to you want to have a test on how patient you are, drive in New York City. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I I had a thought about the patience. Uh, yeah, thing, that ahead. um, your that I've had instances where I was at work and people were accusing me of all kinds of things and carrying on, and I had to keep this in the front of my mind. And when I be quiet, the next day or the next week. Something would happen with them that they would know that I had been right. I didn't have to defend myself. God defended me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, it's a, and the patience comes for me with not, not reacting. Because when you don't, you don't have that, you, go, you harbor that anger or that resentment, it interferes with your communication with God. It interferes mm-hmm. with, with your perception of, of the way you spend your time and what you have to do before you. It can even affect your ministry because it sits in there like a like a worm in your gut, you know, mm-hmm. and just gets, it grows and grows and grows. That's why I think when you forgive people quickly and you you exhibit grace toward them, that they um that you can then proceed with your life without a lot of money. In, in essence, you're freeing yourself from the situation because you're mm-hmm. not allowing it to um influence your behavior and interfere with your life with Christ, which is your priority. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Sister Amen. Janice. Amen. I couldn't have said it better myself. And I had had situations that I just kept my mind. I went to a meeting one time and I was accused for doing wrong and being a bad supervisor and not caring about the job. And mm-hmm. I didn't have to say one word for my manager took it up against the other person and the manager just took control and I was vindicated. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Sister Janice, thank you for, for that. And it's true. And that's where that's what James is, is, is talking about. And that's where James wants us to go. But you want to know something? We have to grow in this. We have yeah. to mature in this. Because yeah. this is not a first instinct. This is not something that we human, because we got that sin nature living within us. And you know, we we're before we came to Christ, that sin nature ruled and had its way and, and all these things. But once we come to Christ, we have a new operating system. Mm-hmm. And, and James is, is teaching us the new operating system and is reminding us about that operating system is to be affecting our lives right here, right now. Mm-hmm. Our work consists of the Christian's work, serving God, caring for one another, proclaiming the good news. Mm. That's what, that's, that's our work. That's the position God has wants us to carry out. And you want to know something? If we're, if we're not growing in patience and if we're not enduring, the, the trials and the tribulation are going to choke out our serving mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. They're going to choke out mm-hmm. our caring for one another. They're going to choke out our proclaiming the good news. That's why it's so critical, especially in the day we're living in today. Because people need God's help. And one of the ways they're going to get it is from you and me. Now, 
I know, I'm just gonna put this out there for me. People need help, but they don't need my mess. They need God. So oh. I gotta come out of the mess to show them God that they'll start trusting in God and then turn to God. Yes. But if we're just showing a bunch, if we're manifesting a bunch of mess and garbage and inconsistencies and unbelief, mm -hmm. who are they going to turn to? Mm -hmm. A little bit more about verse seven. There is an end point, a time when patience will no longer be needed. And that's the Lord's return. We got something to, we. there's a goal to look forward to and that the goal is when Christ returns because when he returns, he's bringing all justice with him. He's gonna make uh -huh. the, the crooked straight. Mm -hmm. At the Lord's return, everything will be made right. Mm -hmm. Just as early church live in constant expectation of Christ's return, so should we. Mm. Because we don't know when Christ will return to bring justice mm. and remove oppression, we must wait with patience. Mm. And please read or write this down and read it later. Second Peter uh, chapter 3, verse 8 to 10. Okay, because we don't know when Christ will return to bring justice and remove oppression, we must wait with patience. Amen. And that's hard. Okay, because sometimes anybody of I had the spirit of frustration and aggravation building up on me. Anybody ever get that? Yeah. You, know, you just yeah, the, the smallest thing can happen and blow you all the pieces and the yeah. frustration and aggravation and and it seems like it's heightening and heightening and heightening and we got to be careful because if we don't counteract that with the word of god it may take us to somewhere we do not need to go uh -huh. james has given us an example of patience which is the farmer who must patiently wait for the precious harvest to ripen. Okay, Dawn was growing some tomatoes outside and basically we real I didn't care, you know, stick it in a pot, see if it grows, if it don't, no big deal. <laughs> but if you're counting on that for money and for food, you care. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna go through the patient process of sticking the seed in the dirt, of watering it, of keeping out the weeds, of making sure it grows good and strong, of putting a stick there to hold it, or if it's in the ground, whatever. You are going to practice patience because you're looking at the end game. In our lives, let's, let's start focusing on the end game, and that for us is Christ's return. So patience, a couple of things about patience, must be exercised. Hello? Okay, patience must be exercised. Amen. Mm -hmm. Patience. Patience must be developed. Mm -hmm. I, got, I got a quick story. I, I'm learning as I become more uh, senior in age, that if I don't exercise, there's things oh. that start hurting that never hurt before. Oh. <laughs> so therefore I, I took up a, a regimen of exercising. Mm -hmm. And because those muscles haven't been developed or are starting the developmental process, they hurt too. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do exercising and I'm developing muscles that fell apart for lack of use. And all of this is growing my patience. Mm. Exercise and development grow patience. Yes. Remember that. Okay? <laughs> now, now that you're exercising that, using it, growing it, and now that you're developing it to a whole nother level, 
there'll be opportunities to develop it just in mm -hmm. regular life. Okay. One of them is being a New York City driver. Oh. If that ain't a development in patience, I don't know what is. Okay. Those of you who are in the workforce dealing with all kinds of people, if that's not a development of patience, I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. Let me put it dealing with children and children mm -hmm. come in all ages. Oh, yeah. If that's not an uh, exercise in development patience, I don't know what is. So I got a couple of examples of the developed patients waiting for the arrival of a baby. Yep. Wait, starting a new job. Hmm? Finishing school. Hmm. Waiting for a loved one's visit. Okay. Patience. Mm -hmm. We had to endure patience when nobody, when we couldn't fellowship the way we used to. Mm. We will exercise patient, patience as we concentrate on the end result of our waiting. God's way is seldom the quick way, but it mm. always, but it is always the complete way. Mm -hmm. So is there any questions on verse seven? Exercise patience. Mm -hmm. Looking for the Lord's return. Go Minister ahead. Some, Tank, uh huh. Go ahead. Um, uh, that verse starts out, dear brothers and sisters. But I remember when you first took us on this journey in James, the first chapter. He starts off again saying, "And could I read it quickly?" Go ahead. He says, "Dear brothers and sisters, again, when troubles of any kind come your way." Consider it an opportunity for great joy, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Mm -hmm. so, let it grow. so let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Amen. Yeah. It, Amen. Thank you, Sister Barbara, Amen. because yeah. I wanted to do, do that transition, and you did it very well for me. James <laughs> is revisiting what he gave us in chapter yes. one. Yes. In chapter one, yes. he gave us faith and endurance. Yes. Now he's winding down. And you know, when you're winding down in a letter, you want to hit the topics once more. So he's hitting that topic of patience and endurance, mm -hmm. which he started the letter off with. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know about you, but when multiple things on the same topics keep coming up, it's an attention mm -hmm. getter. It's a reminder. And, reminder. and it's a reminder. And it mm -hmm. tells you, listen, all of these other things are important, but this is mm -hmm. super important. Amen. So Amen. There's, there's something about faith and endurance and mm -hmm. patience and endurance, which is above all of the normal importance, if I can put mm -hmm. it that way. Okay, any other questions or comments? Thank you, Sister Barbara. That, that, that's where I wanted to go. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay, we're good? Moving on to yes. verse 8. Verse 8, King James Version. Begins the reading of God's holy word. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. You too must be patient. Take courage, for the coming of the Lord is near. Mm. Believers are yeah. to allow the assurance of Christ's return to help them be patient and take courage. In other words, we are not mustering this up just to muster it up within us and to have it, but we're to muster this up. We're to apply this. We're to build this because this is what we're to look forward to, what God has done or will do when his son comes back. And that's, you want to know something? We need goals. We need something to focus on that sometimes to get us out the bed in the right mind and the right mm. spirit. Because sometimes we get up and we're just as nasty as we can be. Sometimes mm. we get up and we got the wrong spirit and we're all over the place and we need something mm. to settle us down. 
Maybe I'm just talking to me with the wrong spirit and nasty. I don't no, know. no, no, no. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. I have to have patients The people will come over and they'll pray for me. And they say, why aren't you praying? Because I'm not out of the bed yet. And I don't know why it is. And they can't figure out what's wrong. It's just is. And I have to have patience with them because they mean well. And right. you know, I'll take a prayer in a minute. But um, it just, it just, some days I get out of bed, get out, uh, wake up, I don't get out of bed, I wake up and I am cranky. I'm angry about this. I don't want to be here. I had plans. Da, 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 da. And then yeah. I have to put myself back in and say, you know, God is sovereign. And if it, it, however I got here, but by his permission of something I did, um, I have to have grace with it. And then I got to pray. And then I have to have grace with the people who administer to me as well. Because they are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Amen. And thank you, because now I don't feel alone. <laughs> You're, not, <laughs> You're not alone. Thank you. Thanks. And look, the, uh, whatever the circumstances, James encourages us to be the rock, so, to be rock solid in our faith, and mm-hmm. to have a faith-inspired joy that invades every part of life. Mm-hmm. So what we were all going through a lot of circumstances. We're all going through stuff we don't want to go through and deal with. But James is encouraging us. Mm-hmm. We're all that you're going through and all that you're facing and all mm-hmm. that internal t- turmoil and and frustration and aggravation that we're going through. And the fact that our spirits cannot be consistent because you know that sinner man, he wants to go whichever way the wind's blowing. Mm -hmm. But James is encouraging us to be rock solid in Mm -hmm. our faith in all of this. Mm -hmm. And to have faith inspired joy. Help us God. Now, when I read that, I read that, yeah, we need faith-inspired joy because far too often we get joy from circumstance and situations mm-hmm. and things mm-hmm. are happy that are happening around us, which is okay. But we need to elevate that to the next level to have mm-hmm. faith-inspired joy because faith-inspired joy is not based on happenings. It's based on God. Amen. And what we're to do is let that invade, you know, those times when we just don't feel whatever. Hold on. Somebody got phone? Okay. So we need to allow that to invade every part of our, now listen, I'll I'll be the first to admit, it's going to take work. It's going to take patience. It's going to take endurance. It's going to take faith. It's going to take you denying some things and picking up what God is saying. But this is the way that God has for us to come through the trials that we are facing. Mm. And if you want to get through, nobody wants to fail. Mm -mm. Sometimes we get in a dark space, though. And because sometimes we get in a dark space, we have these, I call them minor gods. Pride, joy, selfishness. We allow oh. that to reign rather than allow God to reign. Mm-hmm. And God is giving us the, the path of how, not necessary to avoid it, but how to deal with it when it happens. Because I can, if I take a survey, I almost say we went through things we wish we would avoid, we could avoid, but we can't avoid it. So trying to avoid some things, don't stop wasting your time. But (laughs) learn how to go through those things. And how to go through. Mm. For the glory of God. Amen. Minister Pike. From verse 8. Go ahead, Minister Pike. Minister Pike, um, as you you, you made the last quote a a few seconds ago, that we must have faith-inspired joy. And faith-inspired joy comes from the word of God. Amen. That God has promised that mm-hmm. faith cometh by hearing and, and hearing, hearing the word of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 
Th thank you, Minister Pipe, because that brings up another point. If you don't read the word, what, sorry, let me back up. If you're not a Christian, the spirit mm -hmm. of God cannot revelate what that scripture means. Amen. If mm. you do not read the word of God, you cannot revelate what that scripture means. Mm. If you do not start digging into the word of God and studying, and I don't mean just studying the past the test, studying that it impacts your life. Amen. You will not receive the revelation that's needed that that can now bring you bring you out of the darkness and sustain you mm. through the darkness. Mm -hmm. Everybody understands what I mean? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Amen. Okay. If there be no more questions or comments, we'll move on to verse nine. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. New Living Translation says that verse this way. Don't grumble about each other, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. Mm. For look, the judge is standing at the door. Mm. Now, I, I'm just going to go right Woo. to the notes. I ain't going to do because there's <laughs> stuff in here that we need and My we need God. it just as God mm. said. Okay, so first mm. thing, these believers facing God. persecution from the outside mm. and problems on the insides. In other words, mm. they are surrounded. Mm. These believers may naturally find themselves grumbling and criticizing one another. Mm -hmm. Now, come on. I, I grumble. All right. Pressure hits me. I grumble and criticize my wife. Mm. Okay. Pressure hits her. She may grumble and criticize me. I'm just saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the scripture is telling us when you're facing persecution, when you're facing hardship from outside and problems from the inside, it may naturally find themselves grumbling, criticizing. Mm. Let's move on. Next stop. James doesn't want them to be filled with resentment and bitterness toward each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You ever, you ever you, I, I, listen, I know this for me. I've had a, a, a spirit of resentment and bitterness over, for certain people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me too. And it was strong. Mm -hmm. And I could justify it. But here in the mm -hmm. word of God, it says, let's be careful. Mm -hmm. Because if you develop, you, you ever have somebody's just walking in a spirit of, uh, of always stirring up strife? Oh, mm -hmm. yes. 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 Well, this is what the word of God is warning mm -hmm. us against. And he's telling yes. us, yeah, you may naturally find yourself in this situation. No, you may naturally mm -hmm. find yourself doing this mm -hmm. and be careful. Okay. Because the God, listen, you want to kill the spirit of God. You walk in that spirit of strife. Mm -hmm. You want to kill relationships that have been built over 30, 40? Yeah, walk in that spirit. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. James doesn't want them to be filled with resentment and bitterness toward each other. How can we love one another if we're filled with bitterness and oh, mm -hmm. all this? Always grambling and this. Listen, no and another, another thing, this is what the world does. Mm -hmm. Now, why do you want to be identified with something the world does and you say amen, you're a professional amen, Christian? Amen. That would only destroy the unity they so desperately need. I need you. Mm -hmm. You need me. Mm -hmm. But if you want to destroy the unity, you come up against me with resentment and bitterness and that grumbling, criticizing spirit. See how fast I don't drop you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just saying. Mm. Like a hot rock. Like, that's mm. right. But I need you. You need me. Mm. So therefore, we got to deal with that spirit and knock it out by going to God and praying and maybe going having a conversation with the person. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Refusing to grumble about each other is part 
of what it means to be patient. James yes. is hooking up this with patience. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we can walk through and, you know, you can, listen, by the time I get, no, by the time I get down to the kitchen to make breakfast, Dawn can find 50 things to grumble and, and criticize me about. Because I'm mm -hmm. human. I'm a man. And you women you. aren't off the hook either. Not okay. you, the mighty minister of God. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think too, sometimes you need to not so much confront the person or discuss it with them as much as get your own attitude straight. Exactly. Ah, you know, yeah. I yes. I heard because that. Um, you, because it's another, something in you that you're projecting. Oh, yeah. Another program that just said, when you really have, is that right? Pray, pray, yeah. yeah. Yes. Pray for that yes. person for, to, every day. Pray for them. Pray for good things for them. Pray for, pray for anything you think. And it becomes difficult to keep, to pray and also keep the resentment and anger going. Amen. You know, so, so, Amen. You know, Thank you. Maybe they didn't do anything. Exactly. You know, or maybe, or just maybe they, they just are. did it honestly, you know, yeah. honest mistakes. Yeah. Just saying. Thank you, Sister Janet. Uh, grumbling against one another indicates a careless attitude of speech. Mm -hmm. And remember, remember James told us, the tongue is a flaming fire. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah. Man, the tongue mm -hmm. can light up some stuff. And once it's oh, yeah. lit, look at the forest fires out west. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? <laughs> Hundreds of uh, what they call it, yards or area or acres mm -hmm. destroyed acres. because of the fires. Mm -hmm. Okay, Now, I want you to think about this. H how many people have tried to destroy you with their tongue of fire? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about mm -hmm. this one. Don't answer. How many people have you destroyed with your tongue of fire? Oh, my wow. God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. A little bit more in verse nine. Because of the dangers created by our speech, mm -hmm. we cannot afford to be lax in the way we speak to and about each other. Now, listen, I, I'm going to be re re realistic here. I know there's a lot of things you would like to say and they lead to your frustration. But I've also learned it's better that you keep your mouth shut and deal with it eternally, internally, <laughs> and go to God with it than yeah. for you to voice it because you're big and bad and I just got to give them a piece of my mind. You may need mm -hmm. your peace of mind. <laughs> okay? Just away. saying. Just saying. <clears throat> James is warning believers. Now, if he was I saying this to the world, we can understand it. But he's telling Pardon believers, those who are connected to Christ, one not to be in the middle of judging, quarreling, criticizing, or gossiping when the one they should be serving returns. Amen. I'm going to read that one more time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. James is warning believers. Mm. Not to be in the middle of judging, quarreling, mm -hmm. criticizing, gossiping mm -hmm. when the one they should be serving return. When Christ returns, you don't want to be caught up in no nonsense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments so far? Doing good. Mm -hmm. I have one comment, sir. Go ahead. Um, mm -hmm. That's why we need to practice Matthew 18, which is God's confrontation. And um, the Bible teaches how to confront in the Lord. Because sometimes when we keep things to ourselves too, we may pray about it, but it has a way of boiling up within. Mm. Uh, prayer and going to God about it is one thing, but sometimes someone is doing something yeah, they may not front. even realize. Mm. But mm. God says that we are, in, especially in the body of believers, are to do godly confrontation. And he teaches us the steps and just how to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. The person that you may have issue with, if they, at the third step of it, if they won't hear and they don't want to be reconciled, scripture says, 
kick them out the church. Throw them out the church. Mm -hmm. yes. Until they get it together, because then mm -hmm. they can create a whole lot of other things. Because people are open. I remember in our old church many years ago, uh, our bishop used to, and pastor used to teach us, he started teaching about Matthew 18 and what we would do. We would have what we call breaking of bread the, the Friday night mm -hmm. before communion. And we would, if you had ought against anybody, you shouldn't take communion. Yes. Mm -hmm. Try to get it right. That's what the mm -hmm. Bible says. And mm -hmm. we would have a time, everybody would have a slice of bread and have to go to somebody that they had ought against. And when we first started doing it, I mean, the lines would be so long <laughs> of people going to different people. But sometimes, I know one time a young lady uh, came to me and said, so I, I was totally unaware and I was so apologetic mm. when I found out because I wasn't aware that uh, a particular thing had happened and she was very uptight about it. And... Um, but once we got it straight, it was wonderful. And after a while, it turned out that those nights would be just a time of fellowship. Mm -hmm. So mm. people learn how to handle uh, grievances and art straight up in a godly form. And mm. then it kept us from having to have all of that stuff. Now, do people still have stuff? Of course, because not everybody's going to follow the scripture and what God says to do. But... Um, I think if we learn how to confront in a godly, biblical way, yes. it'll keep us from all of this other stuff building up. It mm. can still happen. Trust mm. me. I, I know. <laughs> it can still <laughs> happen. Mm. And God said, don't do it. And um, especially with your brothers and sisters. And see, as we see the day approaching, but we can help safeguard ourselves by godly confrontation. Amen. Uh, Amen. Again, Matthew 18, that 18th chapter has delivered so many people. I know it has delivered me. <laughs> you know, practicing that. That's why you don't want to keep things going for, uh, you know, and then get your friends involved and then mm -hmm. they hate the other person. And you they have all to get the person and nothing, that person's never done anything to you, but just because they're your friend, you know, mm -hmm. all of those are uh, ungodly behaviors. So mm. this is really wonderful. Thank you, Minister Panky, for taking us through these really life changing principles that we find mm -hmm. in the word. So grateful. Amen. Th thank you, Pastor Manning, because you brought up another aspect. It doesn't mean that we close our eyes and do not deal with things that need to be dealt with. Yeah. It just means that we do not take on the ways of the world in dealing with yes, them, sir. but we pick up yes. the way of God to deal with these things. Mm -hmm. And it warns us on what we should not be partaking of. Mm -hmm. Okay, so th that that's where... It, it's very important that we understand. Well, no, I won't even say it's important we understand. It's important that we apply mm. what scripture says if we understand it enough. Mm -hmm. Because it is the word of God. And one thing about God, he tells us what is profitable for us. It's yeah. the enemy who deceives us in telling us what seems to be profitable but really destructive. And we got to learn that from the two kingdoms so that when God says something, we trust him and apply it. And when the enemy comes speaking or whatever avenue he comes in, we learn that he is not trustworthy. Okay? So James chapter 5, verse 10. Here begins the reading of God's holy word in James Version first. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering and affliction and of patience. New Living Translation says that verse this way. For examples of patient, patience in suffering, dear brothers and sisters, look at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
So in other words, if you don't know what this looked like, go back, read your word and see what it looks like so you can have a picture of what should be applied to your life. Mm -hmm. Jewish mm -hmm. Christians knew the stories of the prophets, many of whom suffered greatly or were killed for proclaiming God's message. James is reminding his readers that even those who spoke in the name of the Lord had to have patience in suffering. So in other words, God ain't putting something on us that is um, not reasonable. Mm -hmm. part, of this, part of his point is that God does not protect from suffering those who he has called. Rather, he, he protects, protects them, them in, in suffering. suffering. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm. Prophets are an example to all believers because of their obedience and faithfulness, despite the hardships they endured. Apostle Paul, okay, I could shipwrecked, preaching the gospel, locked up, the apostles locked up, but yet they were, remained faithful. So we ain't got no excuse. You you may make up an excuse, you may justify it, but really, you ain't got no excuse. If there's no questions on verse 10, we'll move on to verse 11. Here begins the reading of God's holy word, King James Version. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord that the Lord is very pitiful, pitiful, and of tender mercy. New Living Translation says that verse this way. We give great honor to those who endure under suffering. <laughs> For instance, ye know about Job, a man of great endurance. You can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end. For the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. Thus far, the scriptures. Mm. Now we got this example of Job. James is leading his le readers to apply the lessons from Old Testament lives. It's an example for us. Go read um, Gideon. Gideon's my man from the Old Testament. Okay, I can relate with Gideon in so many different ways. Something happens, I can recall what Gideon went through and helped me to go through. So I guess the main part of that is have somebody in the Old Testament you can relate to. I can relate to Joshua. Uh, no. Yeah, Joshua. Okay. God called them to be a leader. Okay. So have somebody you can relate to and learn from the things in the Old Testament that they went through. For instance, Job may offer us a fascinating look at ancient history and an interesting biography. But Job's best work is as a teacher, one who has suffered and can help us cope with suffering. <clears throat> There's an attitude we have to develop to go through suffering. In his life, oh, his life is an example we need to follow. Mm. Job may have complained, but he did not stop trusting or obeying mm. God. Yeah. Mm. The Lord did deliver and restore him. See Job mm. uh, 42, 12. Believers, after all the suffering they had endured thus far, were encouraged not to give up. God would deliver mm. and reward them. Mm. A little bit more in verse 11. There's a lot on verse 11. We can see clearly from Job's life that perseverance is not the result of understanding. Job had no understanding at all the reason he was going through, other than he was going through. We do not need understanding. We may like to have it, but it is not necessary. Job never received an explanation from God for his suffering. This is partly because pain 
is often a part of life that must be endured beyond explanation. <clears throat> there are many things we can understand, but not everything. So if you're one of those people trying to understand everything, no, yeah. you're, not, you're wasting your time. God's purpose is not that we, oh, God's purpose is not that we just develop a mind full of explanations and answers. God's purpose is to bring us to a place where we trust him. Amen. God does not enjoy watching his people suffer. Mm -mm. He allows them to suffer such pain because a greater good will be produced. Mm -hmm. James encourages his readers to trust in God, wait yeah. patiently, mm -hmm. persevere, and remember God's tenderness and mercy. That's yeah. going to take work, my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lots of work. We're going to do verse 12, and then we'll finish this teaching for patience and endurance. Verse 12 begins the reading of God's holy word, King James Version. But above all things, my brother, swear not, neither by heaven nor by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea and your nay, nay. Amen. Be should fall into condemnation. New Living Amen. Translation says that verse this way. But most of all, my brothers and sisters, neither take an oath by heaven or earth or anything else. Just say a simple yes or no Amen. so that you will not sin and be condemned. Now what's James Amen. talking about here? Amen. James is referring to Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 5, verse 34 to 37. Please look that up. Taking oaths was a common practice, and James wanted it discontinued among the believers. You ever some swear? I, I'm real. I'm, I swear I'm telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. You ever have somebody say that to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And all kind of oaths. You ain't gotta go to oaths. Mm -hmm. Either I'm gonna take your word or I'm not gonna That's take your word. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. People, uh, people may disrespectful or arrogant verbal guarantees that mm -hmm. they themselves could reverse by legal technicalities. In other mm -hmm. words, they can say by an oath, "This is it," but in a, it doesn't mean anything. It's it's no guarantee. Mm -hmm. Like bold face warranties with lots of fine print. We all know about that. Mm -hmm. These oaths were intended to create an impression of truth, but those who uttered them did not really expect to be held to them. In other words, I'm saying it, but I ain't meaning it because I'm changing mm -hmm. the top of a hat. Christians, you and I should never need to take an oath in order to guarantee the truth of what they say. In other words, because of our lifestyle in Christ Jesus, our, whatever we say should be what it is, the truth. Our honesty should be unquestionable. Believers should not need oaths for their speech should always be yeah. truthful. There goes that speech. That's why it's so critical we do not speak as the world speaks. Because mm -hmm. the world speaks with a forked tongue and we're mm -hmm. to speak with a straight tongue. Mm -hmm. There should be no reason for them to have to strengthen a statement with an oath. Mm -hmm. God will judge our mm -hmm. words. My Lord. Where did you win? Should we take oaths in court? There's a question. The oaths forbidden here are those used to ca in casual conversation, not formal oaths taken in a court of law. Because you'll find some, well, why should I take an oath in court? Because it's different. Okay. And James, we're, des we're describing the difference. Legal oaths are intended to bind those who made them. Perjury is a serious offense. 
Most scholars conclude that James does not require us to refuse to take oaths in court. He's not speaking about that oath in the court. He's speaking about you. I swear it's true. Give me on a stack of Bibles. I'll, I swear on a stack of Bibles. <laughs> Come on, we've heard that. Yes. <laughs> That's what James is talking about. A person with the reputation of ex exaggeration or lying often can't get anyone to believe him on his word alone. We know people like that. Constant liars. You can't believe a word they say. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the Christian, he better not be like that because it's contrary to the word. And how can those in the, that need Christ uh, accept what he's saying if he knows that the person's always lying? There's a problem there. For example, this person might say, I promise or I swear, Christians should never become like that. <laughs> Always be honest so that others will believe your simple yes or no. By avoiding lies, half-truths, or omissions of the truth, you will become known as a trustworthy person. And that's where God wants us to be, known as a trustworthy person. Any questions or comments? We just finished up patient and endurance. Next week, next week, I will try to cover the power of prayer and restoring wandering believers. Wow. Okay, next week, we got a full plate. The power of prayer and restoring wandering believers, according mm -hmm. to scripture. Okay, next week's teaching. Join me. Come on back. <laughs> With that said... Uh, I will thank you for enduring this teaching. Mm -hmm. I pray it was edifying to you and yes, Amen. help you in your Christian walk, which we all, I know I need help. I know a lot of people who say that also about me. Uh, I need somebody quickly to pray for the needs of people within three minutes or so, and somebody to pray for Bishop and to close us out. And I know I'm so far, I've taken five minutes of your time. So forgive me, but I wanted to get through this because I got a plan. Okay. Minister Panky, Minister Panky. Go ahead, Panky. Go ahead who Rose. Who is, whoever is praying for the needs of the people, could you mention my friend's husband, Vincent, who went to Jamaica and caught the COVID and is in the hospital? Oh, mm. no. Okay. Deaconess Pike, can you take the needs of the people to the throne of grace, please? Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for the word that has mm -hmm. gone forth, Micah. Thank you for Minister Panky, who studied the word to impart it unto us, your people. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you'll come to guide, protect him. Father God, just Broaden his, his horizon as he study your word, my God. Father God, we were truly blessed by your word this morning. Mm -hmm. Oh, James, instruct us, my God, as believers, how we ought to behave towards or one another. I truly thank you for this word. It has been a challenge and a blessing to my soul today. And so, God, I pray your blessing upon him and his family. Father God, as we come before you, we present the need of the people Oh, God, there's so much, Lord Jesus, that we could tell you about. But, Father, you know it's all. Mm. Right now, Father God, Sister Roach's friend who is ill in the hospital in Jamaica. Oh, God, we realize that your word, Father God, as we send your word to him, there's yeah. no deep sense in prayer, mighty God. Mm. And so I pray, my Lord and my Father, that you will overshadow that man and help oh god that even during this illness my god that you will reflect on you and know that you are still god and you are still in control bless mm. his family encourage them yes. lord that they will stand strong and know that you do have all things well and so god i just want to thank you and i pray my god even for the the border my god in america 
with the uh, illegal alien um, coming in, my God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that our government, our people, Lord Jesus, will be, oh God. Oh, Lord Jesus, have a, a heart, Lord, for these people. And that, my God and my Father, that as they go back home, my God, there will be provision there for them. God, mm. you know, we are all your people. Some mm. of God are in dying need, Lord. But Father God, we are depending on you as we mm. stand in the gap for them, my God, that they will come to the realization of knowing that only when you are in the, in the midst, yeah. Lord, that you will bless and you will do the most good. Oh, wow. So God, I thank you for today and I just bless yeah. you now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, Amen. Deacon is power. Can you pray for Bishop and close us out, please? Deacon is power. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come this morning thanking you, Lord, for all that you have done and you continue to do. Lord, we bring our leader before you. We bring our bishop before you, Lord God. We thank you for this man of God. We thank you, Lord God, what are, you are doing in his life, oh God, today. Thank you, Lord God. I thank you as he brings the words to us and he, oh God, and his min, he ministers to us, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that you will bless him immensely, oh God. I thank you, oh God, for the covering that you have over him, dear Father. In the name of Jesus, we bring him before you. My God, day by day, Father God, because, Father, we know the enemy is busy and the enemy, my mm. God, wants to save him like wheat. But, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against every hindering spirit this morning, mm. oh God. Father, we thank you this morning for our bishop, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing in his life, oh God. As he ministers, as he look to you, as he listen to you, my father. Thank you that you give him Samuel ears that he can hear, oh God. Oh God, I thank you, Lord God, for his life. Thank you for what he's doing. Oh, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the men and women that you have around him. Oh, God, mm. my God, to help him in this work, oh, God. Thank you for every deacon. Thank you for every minister, every elder. Thank you for Pastor Manning, oh, God, my father. This thank woman you. of God, we thank you for her, dear God. As she stand by our bishop day after day for all these years. Oh, my God, my father, thank you for where you're bringing her, God. Thank you for where you're leading her. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for good health, oh God, mm. for her this morning. I pray mm. for good health for her husband. My mm. God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for what you're doing and you're going to do and you continue to do. I mm. pray for us, our bishop, God. I pray for his family, his wife, his children, God, everyone that concern him. I mm. thank you, dear God, for your loving kindness, oh God, is better than better life. Than life. I thank you, God, of God, this morning, oh God, as he continues to seek you, oh God, as he continue to pray, God Almighty, I thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for where you're leading him in this time that we're living in, oh God. Father, we just give you praise this morning and we thank you for him, dear Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we bless your name, oh Father, and we thank you for everything that you do, everything that you are doing in DBC. Oh Father God, I give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory belongs to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for those prayers. Thank you for joining. Thank you for being a part of today's service and making it what it is. And it's edifying to your life. It's edifying to my life. And this is what we need. For we are called to endure. We're not called to give up. We are called to endure. And the way we endure is through our faith and through our patience. Now, where do we get this from? The word of God. And that is the only source. Next week, we will do uh, cover the topic, power of prayer and restoring wandering believers. Power of prayer and restoring wandering believers. Our topics for next week. 
And then Ooh. after that, uh, I will be taking a vacation and I got a guest speaker for you in two weeks. Oh. Right? So you got a guest right. speaker in two weeks. Next week, we're going to... Hey, next week, we're going to finish the book of James. The whole right. book. We did the whole book. <laughs> Chapter yeah, and verse. Congratulations. Right. Yeah. And I already right. got, we'll be doing the Gospel of John. I'm all ready to go with that. Uh, right. One, two, three weeks. That's where we're going as a service and as a people. So once again, thank you. Mm -hmm. God bless you. And have a blessed day. God bless yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you too. Have a Bye. Day. Thank you. Have a blessed day, everyone. Bless day, everyone. Bless you all. God bless.